One of the things I really like about Amsterdam is the shops and restaurants that are dotted throughout residential areas in the city. These patios and local shops provide a lot of interesting destinations that are always within a very short walk or bicycle ride. This is different from a high street or main street, where the shops are all along one major street. Cities in the Netherlands, like most countries, have high streets too, but these retail pockets bring an interesting character and liveliness to residential neighborhoods and are a more quiet and enjoyable environment to sit in or shop in than along a busy main street. In many ways, these pockets of retail and restaurants remind me of the alleyways of Taipei, which were my favorite part of the city, as they provided liveliness while also making what would otherwise be a dark alley into a location that was inviting and interesting. So these pockets of shops and restaurants are in no way unique to the Netherlands, but what is interesting is that they are illegal to build in almost all of the US and Canada. North American cities follow an approach called Euclidean zoning. If you've ever played SimCity or City Skylines, this will be familiar to you. Euclidean zoning will come up in future videos because it's a big source of problems with North American city design, but I'm not going to go into too much detail of the history here. If you want to learn more, the exceptional urban planning channel City Beautiful has made some good quality videos about zoning in US cities. I'll put links below. But for our purposes now, here's the quick summary. During the Industrial Revolution, cities were pretty horrible places. Someone could literally open a steel mill in the middle of a residential neighborhood, and this led to horrible pollution and a terrible living environment. So zoning was introduced to separate incompatible land uses. This was probably the single most significant contribution that urban planners made to public health in the history of the profession, and likely saved millions of lives, which is why almost every country has some kind of zoning ordinances. Unfortunately, some countries took this a step too far and decided that absolutely everything should be separated from absolutely everything else. This means that in most North American cities, if an area is zoned as residential, then literally nothing else can be built in that area. Here is a typical zoning map, in this case, of my hometown of London in Canada. It is illegal to open a shop or restaurant anywhere within the yellow shaded area. Now admittedly, it is important to keep a residential area quiet and comfortable to live in, and that's not always compatible with other uses. In the Netherlands, there are sometimes issues with noise, crowds, garbage, and other problems related to living right next to, or above, a commercial property. But like all things in city planning, there is a balance to be achieved. Modern North American planning takes a very extremist view that there is no value to having shops and restaurants within a residential neighborhood. But North American zoning is extremist in general. For example, if a neighborhood is zoned R1 for single-family homes, then nothing else, not even townhouses or apartments, can exist there. I'll talk about that in more detail in the future, but in the meantime, you can watch the City Beautiful video, The Case Against Single-Family Zoning. What's interesting to me is that this was not always the case. In our former neighborhood in Toronto, built about a hundred years ago, there were several commercial buildings built within the neighborhood. These areas have been grandfathered into the zoning code and are some of the most desirable and expensive neighborhoods in the whole city. But despite their appeal, new neighborhoods will never be built this way again. Beyond the liveliness that these places bring to a neighborhood, the fundamental issue here is walkability. If there's a local shop, grocer, restaurant, or pub in your neighborhood, then you can walk there. But if your residential neighborhood is separated from every other use, then it means you have to drive to do anything you want to do, and so does everyone else. That results in a lot of car traffic, because it doesn't matter if you're driving across town or just need to buy a bag of milk, you have to get in your car. And yes, where I'm from, we buy milk in bags and we like it that way. But once you've gone to the trouble of getting into your car, you're much less likely to drive to several small shops, meaning most people skip local businesses and drive to the power center with a giant parking lot. Shops in walkable areas are more likely to be run by local entrepreneurs who contribute significantly to the local economy in a way that big box stores do not. And I will talk about that in a future video, 
about the twisted economics of big box stores in North America. By comparison, a walkable neighborhood has enough people living within walking distance for small shops to stay in business, and parking lots are not required, making space available for patios, parquets, and places for people to live. Thankfully, there is a realization in many U.S. and Canadian cities that Euclidean zoning has gone too far. You'll hear urban planners talk about mixed-use development, which is what the rest of the world calls the way you build things. However, I find these developments are still highly localized, such as at a transit hub or along an arterial road. I rarely hear about bringing back low-impact commercial spaces, like restaurants, cafes, and retail shops, into existing residential neighborhoods. And far too much of the area in North American cities is still zoned as exclusively R1 single-family homes. In Toronto, for example, this is called the Yellow Belt, because despite downtown Toronto being one of the most urbanized areas in North America, it is still surrounded by a sea of yellow on zoning maps, where only single-family homes can be built. So I'm happy to live again in a place with sane zoning laws that allow beautiful urban environments like this to exist. Places that reduce car traffic, support local entrepreneurs, encourage diverse retail, and promote walkability. Because honestly, I have absolutely no interest in going back to live in a place like this. And speaking of supporting small businesses, I've had several people ask if they can contribute to the future of not just bikes. So last week, I set up a Patreon account. If you'd like to support the channel, check out patreon.com slash notjustbikes or click on the link below. As for me, I've got to get some milk. I may not be able to buy it in bags anymore, but at least I can walk there. <laughs>